one who created the heavens, poured out his love. We praise your name. And to the one who created the heavens. Shalom, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hunting Blind with Dale. And uh, we've been talking on the Nazarene. Uh, radio network about building up the body edifying the body and we've been doing that you know we've we've taken a lot of attacks uh for some things that's been said but the truth has been brought out and been shown and um you know a couple of weeks ago i sort of had my little angry spell and, and uh, went off on some of the people that actually attacked the, our brethren here because our brethren had documentation of everything that was said, but people wanted to listen to what other people said and attacked them with no reason, no cause whatsoever. I thought, well, and I said, after that, we are going to do start building up the body. Okay. When you build up the body, it's just like building up anybody. You know, I can pretty much uh, uh, test that that uh, you had. Sometimes you get hurt, you got to go in, you got to take things out of the body to build the body up. Right now, here in in the next couple of months, we're going to be actually doing the Passover. Now, it is extremely necessary to know when Passover happens. And uh, so we have a friction within the, in the, the, amongst the Nazarenes, amongst pretty much everybody, because there's two, two or three more different ways that people are looking at the category we're going to be talking about right here. And the category is the new moon. When is the new moon? When the evidence is shown up here on the board, we're going to show you what is the new moon. And then we're going to show you evidence afterwards that pertains to the temple, uh, uh, things that happen in the temple and the th uh, some of the words that are said within the temple services. So we're going to do that. And with that, I'm going to invite our teacher today. Y'all heard him on the radio. Now you get to see him face to face. This is Wade Nanny. This is our teacher. Wade, welcome to the Hunt Barn. Sir, thank you very much for coming in. And as you see on the board, Wade's already got some stuff up here. This comes from, you might want to get your, open up your Bibles to Psalm 81. Verse 3, because this is where everybody takes out of context and said there's a sliver of the moon that that's the new moon. We're going to show you from yod Hey bob Hay's own words, his own words, his own writing that he created, that it is not the sliver. Wait, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Dale. Oh, and before I do this, let me go ahead. I'm the kind of person, I like to, uh, to be in a... Uh, I've been in law enforcement and everything pretty much my, my whole life. I like the scales of justice. So what I'm going to do is, wait, there's somewhere I can use right here where I can draw a little justice scale right here. Let's do it right here. Okay. We're down, we're down here. Little, little justice scale right here. Okay. Before we start, this is what we got. We have been saying that it's a sliver of moon, so we're going to say this side is sliver, so we'll just put an S, and this side is, we're just going to say new moon, okay? So they're saying that there's a, uh, got to have a sliver. What else is uh, that, that said during the, um, to back them up on the sliver of the moon? Uh, got the sliver. Uh, it's, um, what else they used to back up their... Well, the Jewish establishment postpones things. The postponement. So that's two. So this is just two, two things that uh, so far we're outweighed with. So, uh, wait, let's go ahead and see if we can start adding some weight on our side and show, seeing what the truth is here. Okay, as Dale was indicated... Some people say that to the new moon is determined by visual sighting of a sliver. 
I've always wondered what did it do in overcast weather. Some say it's the conjunction point when it's totally concealed. And I say the Orthodox Jewish establishment that determines the Jewish calendar, they have these rules of postponement. Well, we studied in to this around here five years ago, and as I understand it, we go by Genesis 114, which says that what goes up on up in the sky determines when something happens. Now, I cannot see how you can postpone an astronomical event, nor call it before, say it's happened before it happens. And I believe that this one verse here has the key to the whole thing. We looked into it five years ago, I laid it out somewhat, but I at least understand the Hebrew a little better now, if they can make it clearer. Okay. Psalm 81 3, call it Mizmor, like the Hebrew, a part of the Telahim. All right, it has six Hebrew terms. Takai b'chodesh shofar b'kasei v'yom hagni. Now, the old King James that we're often very familiar with renders that blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. You look at some of the other old translations like the bishops, some of them that preceded the uh, King James, you'll find the same thing. I believe they were basing that on the Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint, which renders it an el segmo chimera meaning in the well-marked or well-indicated day. See, it was something that something that, that they could very well indicate, and I believe beforehand, as we'll get into here, not just on a side. Right? From the King James' own virtually ever, if not ever, translation, will render it something like blow the trumpet at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day. Some of them are more have it stretched out longer and more flowery involving somebody's notion. I believe Harold you said one time or more than once that some scholar back at a certain point determined that that should be the full moon and everybody has gone by that since then, right? What was the man's name? I can't remember. Anyway, that's how that came into being. And since that point, everybody has, has taken that uh, on his advice as full moon. I say that there's no way you can get full moon out of it. If you look in the... Now, there's, there's actually no feast, right? Or the trumpet is trump blown on a full moon, right? No. Hmm. No. Yeah, well, we're going to get into that. But anyway, I, I believe if you look in Strong's Concordance, the King James, you won't even find the term full moon anywhere. Some Bibles it is, and some places it's clearly indicated as being full moon. Okay, the, you'll find that in... That, English, that word is in full moon in the Strong's Concordance. It is? Because he made it later on. Okay. But anyway, you'll you'll find full moon in Song of Solomon 16 and two places in Isaiah 24, 23, and 30, verse 26. But in those places, all it is is the Hebrew term Lebanon. All right. See the first three letters, that's like the name Laban. White. See, Laban, 
father-in-law of Jacob, that means white. And here we have Lebanon. You can see that in the name of the country, Lebanon, because they have some snowy hill country, mountain region. And out of there flows the Libani River, coming out of the white snowy area. Okay, so this Liban, Libani, Lebanon word is just whiteness, brightness, see, when it's full moon, the whole surface is glistening white, so that's the way that's indicated. Here you have an exact thought, okay, Takai, that is, makes some kind of a loud noise, we'll say sound in this case. Bichodesh is on the new moon. Chodesh is a word for new moon or beginning of a month. Shofar. So, blow on, at, or in the new moon, the shofar. I'm so sorry, Dad. say, well, I'm saying that is at the concealment, at the hiding, the covering. Because you see the, the word ka summit he. That is rendered generally kasa a couple of places, kase. The same three letters. Okay, the first place in the Bible that's used is Genesis 7 17 the flood account, where it says to the waters, kasa, the earth, covered the earth. Now something, Total covered. something is covered, well, it's covered, right? It's concealed. No slivers or anything. Right? Toward, I'll explain this later, going toward our Pilgrim Feast Day. Pilgrim Feast Day. Right. You see, you, the word here is Ha. All right. There, there are only three Hagim. See. You, you have a list of Moedim set occasions in Leviticus 23. Okay. But only the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, Pentecost, and Greek speak, and Feast of Tabernacles, or Hagim. That's the feast that take, right, right. take you to Jerusalem to the temple. Right. Pilgrim feast for the travel. Right. See, all Hagim are Moedim, but not all Moedim are Hagim. <laughs> right? Like some of us. People say all Texans are Americans, but not all Americans are Texans. <laughs> Herbert Armstrong used to like to say that all Jews are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. And say here. Now, let's finish on that while we add it. None of the three Hagim can fall on the new man. Unleavened bread is the 15th day of the first month. Okay, 15th tells you automatically middle of the month, in other words, at the full moon. Full moon. Same way that these tabernacles in the seventh month. Shavuot Oak falls a few days into the third month, but not on the beginning of the third month. So none of those can fall on the new moon. Now, going back to the Kase word. Let me erase the blue part here. I'm notorious around these parts for falling back on word pictures. See, Elohim was the one that created this language, programmed it into Adam and Eve, and it's pictorial. At the base, at the very gut level, you always got a picture there if you can see it. 
All right? The bed here, that's like a, the preposition, in at Rome. So, ka, I'm going to use a darker color here in case it's not showing up too well. Lay it backwards, did it? See, the, the Roman C is the Hebrew ka turned backwards. Like the Greek sigma is the Hebrew psalm turned backwards. Okay, ka. Every letter has a picture. That is the open hand. Or palm of the hand. It has the action of covering. Okay, psalmic. Psalmic, that is a prop or support. Hey, like a window, that reveals something. And in a word, it's say that which comes from the previous letters or is revealed by results from. So, so it's what comes from the above. All right. The word picture I'm getting here is it's like God drops His hand up, open hand, covering the moon and it's totally concealed. Hmm. Just like I, if I have a flashlight here and you don't want somebody to know that you're around, I raise my hand up and cap it over like that. It's a concealment. So the way I'm reading this is sound on the new moon the shofar at the concealment going forward toward our feast day. And notice I put the prepositional type letters in red. See? Uh, the bet is a house, okay, and that used in this manner and on the beginning of words like in Adron. Now notice, a while ago in the translation, they would use the same preposition, like at the full moon, for instance, as they did back here. They were trying to read the Lamy just like they did the Bets. But Lamy, okay, what's the Lamy stand for? That's your rod or staff, the stick at We've just seen tremendous video illustrating here a while ago. But, all right. The Lama represents leadership. See, when the shepherd takes that staff in his hand, he leads the flock forward. See. So as in prepositional type use, it means to or toward. See. Motion forward. So, at the new moon, when the your fire is blown at the dark of the moon, the concealment. You're then going forward two weeks to a pilgrim feast. That occurs both in the first month and the seventh month. The first month. The Passover season, the first day of unleavened bread being the first holy day. And exactly six months later, you have the Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Hmm. Right? And another thing I meant to mention which it won't come to mind right now, maybe I've already covered it. Oh yeah, David and Jonathan. It's like I said. This propping up of the hands, that might have a double meaning too. Because we learned several years ago that in ancient times, 
there would be a certain morning when the moon was starting to wane that a man could reach his arms out with palms open, fingers spread out, thumbs together. Okay. On the morning that you could line the little finger over here on the sun, the early morning sun, and at the same time the finger on the other hand would be on the waning moon, it would be nine days until the Kodesh, the Kaseh, the Kaseh. So you're saying they can use their hands to predict when there's going to be the, no sign of any moon there. So they didn't need all this astrological right. stuff we have today. They can... And in Second Samuel, you'll find that First David is... Huh? First Samuel. Is it First Samuel? What's the exact word? So it's 25. Okay. First Samuel... 25 what? 20 verse 5. 20 verse 5. 20 verse 5. 20 and verse 5. Okay. See, it's coming up to the new moon where they have some sort of a gathering in Jerusalem and Jonathan is leaving, but David is staying out in the field. And Jonathan says to him, uh, David says, did it, have I got it backwards? Yeah. Okay. Read it. Can you read it, Dale? Mm, 20 verse 5. He says, And David, this is out of the uh, HRV, and it says, um, And David said unto Yahamatan, Yahamat, Behold, Yahamat. tomorrow is the new moon when I should sit with the king to eat. So let me go that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at evening. Okay, Jonathan's leaving, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to come? Okay, so... And David said to said to young Tom, yeah, so David Jay's going to leave him. Hold tomorrow. David's okay. Right. Thanks, so. Jonathan's staying, David is leaving, and it says you will be missed or your seat will be empty. Tomorrow is the new moon, it says, right? Okay, how did they know beforehand? They, they had methodology some way. People back then just weren't all that stupid. No, I don't, I don't think they're as and, stupid as people make out to. And the, one of the methods I've heard of is the open palms of the hands up together, getting that distance nine mornings before it occurred. So it's not a matter that you would try to cite some sliver after it happened. Okay. Well, well here, here's my thing with the sliver. How many people does it take to look at a sliver? They required two witnesses, but what they went by, I believe. The, but how many people does it take to actually see a sliver? One. Just one person. Now, if you're doing... This, you know, there's two days in between that there's no moon showing. How many people would you need to make sure that is taking place? I think that's where the two people come into play. The two witnesses where they can calculate together to, to come up with their uh, their time when that is actually taking place within the two days. That's, am I pretty much correct on that? They will take probably more than two witnesses. Yes, you're, you're addressing the Heart, you're addressing the heart of the issue right now because most folks don't think that those folks are smart enough to calculate conjunction. We're, we're so proud in our computer age that we think well, you have to have a NASA diagram, you have to have a NASA computer. How would they know? Well, we still don't know how they built the pyramids. We still don't know how they ever lifted the ball back stone. We could sit here for an hour and say we don't know how they did this and they did it. And the Egyptians did a lot of it. And Moshe. Moshe was trained there, and he knew. If you can, if you can take something as simple as a protractor on a, on a level horizon, on a morning when the when the when you have a waning, gibbous moon, and you can read the degrees from the horizon just as the sun comes up to the moon, and a simple multiplier, you can tell within an hour, one hour, when conjunction is. They knew how to do that. So the whole most of the problem is our concept. Well, they wouldn't know how to do that. Yes, they did. 
They were expert mathematicians. Brilliant. Really? Same way with the Navy, how they used to get their ships around before we had all the computers and stuff. With a sextus, yes, sir. Sure did. Absolutely. And these days, all we got to do is get on the internet, go into the Naval Observatory site, and you'll have charts where you can see years in advance exactly when everything occurs. Equinoxes, solstices, and the monthly conjunctions. So... Let's go back here to to our uh, scale. Uh, we don't prove. Well, you don't prove here that it was not the sliver that it was. The hot dash, which means the concealment. Mm -hmm. but concealment means totally what? If you conceal something, it is totally hidden. So we can pretty much say that uh, the uh, the sliver is, is out of the picture. And uh, what else we said? Other ones over here. Put that corner. Um, postpone. Yeah, the postpone. How, how do you get the postpone out of this? For like I say, to, to me, an astronomical event happens when it happens. When it happens. So, and there's, and this law of post postponement that they do is actually non-scriptural, correct? There's no word of all where it says you're to postpone anything. So I think we pretty much blew that out of the water. So we'll add this over here. I think we take that one off. Oh, it's not looking too good for you. So now we, you broke it down also into common Hebrew language with the pictures. Hand cover, to cover things up. Um, so the scripture there laid out. That's another another way to add on to this. Uh, Full moon, I made it perfectly clear. Well, the difference between the full moon and the covering is by scripture. So I think we can add one more there. So, um, you know, I put, because I backed this up, I told anybody that can prove this wrong. I had a hundred dollar reward, anybody can prove this wrong. And many people tried when they sent to the verse and showed them this. They back down. The reward's still up. If you can prove this wrong, it's yours. So, but this is what's going on because we have certain, should I go ahead and say it? Should I go ahead and announce the, the group that's actually proclaiming this? I had a question about that, as a matter of fact. What's that? My, uh, my, my, my question is, is basically, um, we, we know the whole thing with the crescent moon has a lot to do with Islam. Mm -hmm. Now, this certain group that you're talking about that I have a feeling are the Kairites. Mm -hmm. There is a Muslim uh, that was founded in Islam. So my question would be, do, um, could, could, could the confusion be coming from Kairitism and from the Muslim influence within Kairitism for people to be going and observing the crescent moon as opposed to what the scriptures clearly say. That I couldn't say because I don't know how far back this sighting of the crescent goes. Do you have an idea, Harold? The Babylon. The back to Babylon? At least. At least. It might go back to the Egyptians sometimes. But I know it goes back at least to the Babylon to the Babylon and carry away. But but again, what Islam has, they have carried down to the ancient Babylon. Egyptian moon worship stuff. I mean, it's all one system carried them down simple. under different names. Yeah, we can well, take all that back all the way to Ezekiel 8, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. that style of practice. So, so there you have it. You're hearing it once again. You know, this is the thing. Well, we were attacked by the Karaites because we spoke up and telling the truth. And they're saying, and they're basing their time on the crescent moon, which comes from Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Daddy's word. Okay, you can argue with me all day long. You can argue with Wade all day long. You can't argue with Daddy. That's his word, his own language. Okay, there's no argument with that. That is not the crescent moon. It is the hidden moon. Now we have some scripture to back up because if you don't know this, you don't know Revelations. You don't know the second coming of Yeshua because you have to go back to the temple services. 
look at what temple service is. And, and one of the scriptures says, uh, a day that no man knoweth. If you go in and look at the temple services and what that means, it means the two days that it takes for this new moon to happen. Can you, can we all go into detail on how the new moon goes, stretches for two days? I just know that it's generally revealed on the third day. It's revealed, but it's totally like hidden for two days. Like so many things are to the pattern. Oh. And, and we know from, from, from the beginning of Genesis, where he even makes the day, he starts the day at night time. And so now he's starting a moon at the night time, at, at the beginning of nothing, and he goes into something. So it's, it's the pattern that he keeps going, going to. <coughs> so, uh, so we know those two are taken care of. Let's say, uh, does anybody have any questions? We'll take some questions. Is it, does it make sense what what weights put up here on, on the board? When we look at the Hebrew. And all this stuff, I, I know there's many people out there that call themselves teachers, and they claim to know Hebrew, but when you look at this verse in the Hebrew, it's blatantly obvious. Now, I, I don't want to be a jerk or anything, but the thing that I would ask is, do, do, you, do you think it would probably be a good idea if somebody who claims that they know Hebrew, have looked at this verse, will argue the verse that it is the crescent? But we should probably stay away from that quote-unquote teacher. I agree with you for simple fact. They like said there's nowhere here where it says Slayer Moon. I got attacked because I said it was the thing. And, and because of Nehemiah Gordon, because they were friends with him, they hit me and said it's 20% or 10% of the Slayer of the Moon. If you can show me 10% Slayer of the Moon right here, your money's waiting on you. That, that's all I can say because I said you can argue with me all day long, but you can't argue. You can't argue with Daddy. You can't argue with his that scripture. There, there's, there's no way, you know. And and like I said, I'm not here. I'm here to build up the body. And in order to build up the body, we have to remove the things because it makes it clear there are fast days and there are feast days that we are to keep. And if we're starting our month on the wrong day, then we're keeping our feast days. We're keeping our fast days on the wrong day. And we need to come into alignment and be in unity on those days that we are supposed to be coming into Him. That is the whole purpose of this teaching. And I'm hoping each and every one of you are, are getting this because, like I said, this is dead. This is not me. This is uh, uh, not a way. This is Daddy. This is on the Word. You can go to King James. You can use, uh, I think you had an NSAV up there. Uh, any, any script you pull up, if you go back and use the actual Hebrew out of it, this is what you're going to get. So, uh, I can't argue with it. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Dale, one of the things that's very helpful, if you have a, uh, if you have a computer with these words, it's very easy, is to go to that word in Psalms 81, 3, Vaca say, Okay, and right click on the Strong's number and it'll show you everywhere that, that that word appears in the original language and look at the variety of ways it got translated. That should tell you something right there that there's... The thing about that, Harold, is because that, that one form there is listed as a different entry in Strong's. I understand. Yeah. There's only two places where that entry is. In, in yeah, you'd actually need two numbers there, I believe, and the, the main one would be the... In other words, it's not right. exactly the same. It's just pronounced, they pronounce that one Kassa, and the other one Kassa. Right. It appears tons of places. Uh, but the point I meant to bring out for God was that so many times, you see, in the original language, there were no vowel marks and all these little added things, things added in. You just have the letters like I've gotten here. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, those vowel markers and such are somebody's interpretation. And sometimes they mark them wrong, like in Zechariah 5, see, where it talks about this woman who's so, so wicked, she's shut up in a, some sort of a cylinder that's laid case. Mm -hmm. Well, the trouble is, there are 
marking it to pronounce it Isha, woman, where it should be Asha, fire. A fire so wicked it has to be shielded by lead, and we know what that is. Mm-hmm. The, the curse. Voila. Can't so you can't always go for the little variations of pronunciation. See, so when the letters are the same, you have the same basic picture. Okay. Well, does anybody have any questions? Don't think. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming and, and, and listening to uh, to uh, the hunting blind here uh, with my guest Wayne and. Of course, Carl Creech is a good teacher over here. He's he's one that teaches a lot of on the on the moves. I want to make Harold a Harold is the one that I credit most before for understanding this sort of stuff. I just went into this verse and tried to analyze it. You mind if we erase this on this right here, quick? Go right ahead. Uh, I want to do a little drawing right quick. I want to show you how easy how easy this is. Because if you do math, if you're a mathematician, which I am not, but if you do math, I'm going to try to draw a line right here. Right. Say that's a straight line. It's not, but say it's a straight line. Okay. All right. You have a straight line right here. We all know what the full moon is. Okay, full moon right here, that's when it's glowing and it's all nice and little pretty and everything. This is the full moon. Let's give them a lot. Okay, now. Okay, this is the sliver, the 10% of the sliver of the, of the new moon. If this is the new moon, this is a 10% sliver. If you go from the full moon straight across, if you go to the sliver, what happens here? Are you going to the straight line straight across? Or are you off? If you get the full moon and the new moon are, are opposites of each other, there's no way that the crescent can fit in there because the crescent's going to be above it. Which is going to take you off your off your line. Okay, that, that's simple math. That's that's, that's the, the simplest way that, that I can, can can show it to you. That's the only way that can go. Okay, so uh, once again for no questions. Once again for uh, myself. Thank you for coming to the uh, the hunting blind with me and getting the, the facts straight and let's get the body start building up and get it in use and start uh, doing our feast days and our fast days on the same days. Okay? Love a piece of chicken grease. Shalom, shalom. To the one who created the heavens poured out his love we praise your name and to the one who created the